And today, the quest to understand space on the smallest scale is continuing with one of the most expensive science experiments in history. This is CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Geneva. And here, buried a few hundred feet below the ground, is the Large Hadron Collider, the world's most powerful accelerator. With a price tag of about $10 billion, it accelerates subatomic particles to more than 99.99% of the speed of light and smashes them into each other. In the showers of debris produced by these collisions, scientists at places like this have discovered a whole zoo of strange and exotic particles. And right now, they are chasing one of the most elusive. A particle thought to be essential to shaping everything from the atoms in our bodies to the most distant stars. If this particle is found, it will redefine our picture of space and fulfill a quest begun more than 40 years ago. It all started in 1964 when a young English physicist named Peter Higgs suggested something about space that was so radical it nearly ruined him. I was told that I was talking nonsense, that I couldn't be right. So they clearly hadn't understood what I, what I was saying. <laughs> Higgs and a few others were wrestling with a puzzle which comes down to this. The fundamental particles in the universe all contain different amounts of mass, which we usually think of as weight. Without mass, these particles would never combine to form the familiar atoms that make up all the stuff we see in the world around us. But what creates mass? And why do different particles have different masses? Try as they might, no one had been able to answer this perplexing question. Then, one weekend, after a walk outside Edinburgh, Higgs had a peculiar idea. Using mathematics, he imagined space in a new way, as something like an ocean. Particles are immersed in this ocean and gain mass as they move through it. To see how this works, think of a particle's mass like an actor's fame. And the Higgs ocean is like the paparazzi. Some particles, like unknown actors, pass through with ease. The paparazzi simply aren't interested in them. But other particles, like superstars, have to push and press. And the more those particles struggle to get through, the more they interact with the ocean and the more mass they gain. Higgs was convinced he'd made a great discovery. But when he submitted his idea to a journal at CERN, it was rejected. Undaunted, Higgs honed his theory further until he was offered the chance to present it at Einstein's old haunt, the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. There, he expected his new idea would meet some of its toughest critics. I was happily driving up the freeway, and then there was a sign to turn off for Princeton, and that really confronted me with what I was going into. I broke out in a cold sweat and, uh, and started trembling, and I had to uh, pull off the road to recover. But Higgs persevered. It was the first in a series of talks that would convince colleagues far and wide that he was onto something profound. Eventually, I, I sort of wore them down. I felt I'd sort of triumphed. <laughs> so I enjoyed the parties which followed. Today, the idea Higgs pioneered, called the Higgs field, is crucial to our understanding of space. The Higgs field is everywhere. It's something that even in the emptiest vacuum of space has an effect. It gives you mass. So I think Higgs actually deserves credit for being one of the people that said space is stuff. It has properties in it that are intrinsic that you can't get rid of. You can't turn them off. The only problem? There's no physical proof that the Higgs field exists. At least not yet. 
But here at CERN, scientists are attempting to smash particles together with so much energy that they will knock loose a piece of the Higgs field, producing a tiny particle of its own. It's as if they're trying to chip off a piece of space. We think that if we knock into space hard enough with particle accelerator collisions, that we can actually make a Higgs particle come out of empty space. Our whole understanding of matter as we now have it would just fall apart if the Higgs field didn't exist. I don't think anybody seriously doubts that we will see it. Certainly if we don't, that would be an extremely bizarre outcome. Finding the Higgs particle would be a major milestone. Establishing that the emptiest of empty space has an impact on all of matter. But it turns out that space contains an ingredient far more elusive than anything Higgs ever imagined. An ingredient that may hold the key to the greatest of all mysteries, the very fate of the cosmos. It's a mystery that began some 14 billion years ago in what we call the Big Bang. In a fraction of a second, the universe underwent a violent expansion, sending space hurtling outward. Space has been expanding ever since. For decades, most scientists thought that expansion must be slowing down thanks to the pull of gravity. When I toss a, an apple up, the gravity of the Earth eventually stops it and brings it back. And just like the apple, slows down with time, so too the universe should have been slowing down in its expansion because of the gravitational attraction of all matter and energy for all other matter and energy. But that raised the question, what is the ultimate fate of the cosmos? Would space go on expanding forever? Or would gravity eventually stop space from expanding, causing it to collapse back on itself in a big crunch? To solve this mystery, two teams of astronomers set out to measure the slowing of the expansion using a novel tool. Exploding stars called supernovas. So a supernova is a star that ends its life in a massive explosion. Uh, they're extremely luminous. Uh, they can be as bright as a billion suns. What makes supernova great is that they're very similar when they explode. They all get to about the same brightness and then they fade away in just about the same way. Because the explosions are so bright and uniform, the teams reasoned that these supernovas would act as very precise cosmic beacons, allowing them to track how the expansion of space has slowed over time. The trouble is, supernovas are extremely rare. To find enough of them, Perlmutter spent years calling astronomers around the globe, begging for time on their telescopes. We needed the biggest telescopes in the world. We needed perfect conditions. And in those perfect conditions, I would be calling people up at the middle of their night when they're trying to do some serious work. And I'd be saying, I know that you have a very busy schedule, but by any chance, if you could just squeeze in this half hour observation, it would, it would really uh, be very interesting to us. When they finally had enough data to chart how much the pull of gravity was slowing the expansion of the universe, they were in for a surprise. The results looked a little bit strange. They didn't really show any slowing of the universe at all. Very surprising. Actually, a universe that's actually speeding up. It was as though space, which we really thought was nothing, actually had an inherent springiness to it. And so uh, space did not want to be compressed. Space actually wants to push the universe apart. It looked like the universe was expanding faster and faster with time, accelerating rather than decelerating. My immediate response was, I have to figure out why this is wrong. This can't be right. But it was right and most scientists converged on one explanation. There's something that fills space and counteracts the pull of ordinary attractive gravity, pushing galaxies apart and stretching the very fabric of the cosmos. This mysterious substance filling space 
has been dubbed dark energy. And it's turned our picture of the universe upside down. Over the largest distances, dark energy dominates the contents of the universe. And we don't know what it is. If you do sort of a survey, a census of all the energy in the universe, dark energy turns out to be about 70% of the universe. And up until a decade ago, nobody imagined such stuff even existed. So, in essence, the weight of empty space itself is 70% of the weight of the entire universe. That's roughly the same percentage of Earth's surface that's covered by water. Imagine we didn't know what water is. That's where we stand with dark energy. We're really clueless about how to explain it. We have all of this fancy scientific apparatus of quantum mechanics and relativity and particle physics that we've developed in the last hundred years. And none of that works to explain dark energy. And the discovery of dark energy held another surprise. The idea that the universe contains such an ingredient had actually been cooked up 80 years earlier. I'll let you in on a little secret. Although he didn't call it dark energy, long ago Albert Einstein predicted that space itself could exert a force that would drive galaxies apart. You see, shortly after discovering his general theory of relativity, his theory of gravity, Einstein found that according to the mathematics, the universe would either be expanding or contracting but it couldn't hover at a fixed size. This was puzzling because before they knew about the Big Bang, most scientists, including Einstein, pictured the universe as static, eternal and unchanging. When Einstein's equation suggested an expanding or contracting universe, not the static universe everyone believed in, he had a problem. So Einstein went back to his equations and modified them to allow for a kind of anti-gravity that would infuse space with an outward push, counteracting the usual inward pull of gravity, allowing the universe to stand still. He called the modification the cosmological constant. Adding the cosmological constant rescued his equations. But the truth is, Einstein had no idea if this outward push or anti-gravity really existed. The introduction of the cosmological constant by Einstein was not a very elegant solution to try to find what he was looking for, a stationary universe. It achieves this effect of anti-gravity. It, it says that gravity sometimes can behave in such a way as not to pull things together, but to push things apart. Like the clash of two titans, the cosmological constant and the pull of ordinary matter could hold the universe in check and keep it static. But about a dozen years later, the astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered the universe is not static. It's expanding due to the explosive force of the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. That meant Einstein's original equations no longer had to be altered. And so suddenly, the need for a cosmological constant went right out the window. Thank you, brother. Einstein is said to have called this his biggest blunder. But here's the thing. With the recent discovery that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, scientists are convinced that there is something in space that is pushing things apart. So 70 years later, Einstein's biggest blunder may rank among his greatest insights. It was something that nobody else was thinking about but it might be that Einstein's cosmological constant is the key to understanding the expansion of the universe as we see it today.